Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar where we'll be talking about unlocking connectivity with our most recent releases. I'm going to first start by playing a video that we use to launch all of our releases. So for the first minute or so, just sit back and watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Again, and welcome to today's webinar about our most recent wave of releases that are focused on connectivity with the aim to eliminate the fragmented and disconnected processes that are often found in localization workflows. My name is Allison Spangler, and I'm a product marketer at Phrase. It's my job to bring to our customers all of the powerful capabilities of Phrase and ensure you can leverage them to the best of, uh, to get the, their full potential. And joining me is my colleague, Martin Sveska, who is the uh, Director of Product Management. And he will be also introducing you to some of the releases today and showing you a demo of the phrase localization suite. So let's take a look at our agenda. We will first, go through the recent releases and the connectivity enhancements that go along with them. Then Martin will take you through a demo where, where you'll see the out of the box connectivity between phrase strings and phrase TMS and how to best leverage this. We'll then go into the additional exciting releases that came out in May and then take a glimpse into the future with our roadmap. So before we dive into the releases, I thought I'd start with a little about the phrase localization suite and why connectivity. So the phrase localization suite was designed from the ground up to automate, manage, and connect any and all of your localization activities. And in these releases specifically, We've created connections between phrase and new technologies like ChatGPT, for which we've launched the opportunity to join the beta. We've enhanced the way that teams connect to the phrase localization suite, making it easier than ever for every team, no matter the use case, to collaborate and easily connect with each other in one localization hub. And we're also connecting our users to technology in new ways. For example, the in-context editor for strings, just to name, name one release. So you can increase productivity and harness the power of the suite in new and intuitive ways. And with these releases and even looking into the future, our ultimate goal is to power a, localiz a localization ecosystem for all global businesses that gives you the power to localize more content at scale and at a fraction of the cost. We are doing this now with the phrase strings and phrase TMS as a foundation. And in addition, you'll see the other really strong product pillars we have, such as integrations, phrase orchestrator, 
phrase translate and phrase analytics. So just to go into a little about the suite for those who might not know yet, phrase strings is the key-based developer loved tool that product teams can use to create a single source of truth for their digital products. It's perfect for managing software and digital product localization. Then we have phrase TMS, which is most suited for localization managers or marketing managers and content editors. Anyone who would like to connect to a CMS or other content repositories to automate their multilingual publishing. And it's also the best place to manage translation workflows, providers, and, and your resources like translation memories and term bases. So both of these products work seamlessly together, which Martin's going to show later in his demo. And just to go into some of the other pillars that we have. So we're always adding new integrations and updating existing ones across the suite so that you can connect to any CMS or repository that you need to do to do your job. We're enabling teams with orchestrators, unprecedented workflow, customization capabilities, and enabling you to unlock automation at new levels. Of course, we have Phrase Translate and our very own engine, Phrase Next MT, which allows you to use machine translation with high quality results and at scale. We have some exciting developments in this space, which we're not going into today. So it's just a little uh, preview for you to watch for future announcements. And then finally, with add-ons like phrase analytics and advanced analytics, you have complete visibility of all of your localization data, which gives you the power to better control your processes, manage resources, and cut costs. So now that we have taken a look at the suite, we can jump right into the releases. So I'll pass it to Martin, who will take it from here. All right, thank you, Alison, and uh, thank you for introducing me, as well as uh, thanks, everyone, for attending uh, this webcast and then taking one hour from your busy lives uh, to see what we've released. We did focus a lot on the connectivity in the Spring, and then we'll have one highlight for you from Strings, one from TMS, and we'll have a series of highlights from the entire kind of a sweet connectivity package. From Strings, uh, we would like to uh, talk about the whole new in-context editor that was released just recently. There was an in-context editor before, but the version was a little outdated and it wasn't uh, really matching the capabilities that you could experience in the uh, normal editor. So the product and engineering teams have done a really tremendous job of taking the full power of the new editor that you have in Strings and then making it also available as an in-context editor. By doing that, they actually killed multiple birds with one stone. One of them is that you get immediately full features, all the features that you have normally in the editor. And on top of it, it's going to be sort of self-maintained. So there's no need to maintain both editors. So you can really start enjoying the ICE as we call it. Now, why would you do that? Well, it really gives you the ultimate power in terms of the context that you get. Because what you do, you take the editor, and through a little bit of the integration code, uh, you bring it into onto your website. And then the editor appears there. You can edit the strings right in the context. So immediately you can see whether they fit, whether they fit the tone of the voice, uh, whether they don't duplicate something on the page, whether they fit the layout. And then when you make the updates, they're immediately persisted back to the strings project that is linked to it. So uh, it's a very powerful tool. So that's how you can connect uh, to your external websites. Some of the technologies like IATN Next, uh, Vue, uh, React are already supported and there's more coming soon. All right, next slide, please. Now we're gonna get the highlight for TMS. So for TMS, we picked the uh, contentful application that extends the integration that we already have in TMS. So TMS had a connector for Contentful for quite some time. It's actually one of the most powerful and most popular uh, integrations that we have. It supports the entry level, uh, it supports the field level, uh, but uh, it was always implemented as a connector, which means that we connect from TMS to Contentful through their API. 
and all the orchestration, orchestration and management happens on the TMS site. That may fit uh, many workflows, but in case that you have a workflow where you want to give your authors who work in Contentful more power over when things get submitted, how they submit it, um, getting them an overview, what's happening with the documents while they're being translated, then you can install this new application on top of it. The app is available for download in the store, and it gives the uh, experience that you can see on the screenshot um, that the authors within Contentful can directly interact with. So it gives them a lot of power without leaving the Contentful environment. So that's a highlight on the TMS site. Now we're going to get into the suite. So I'm going to now show you some of the uh, things that we released that are sort of agnostic of the individual products, TMS and strings. It's actually something that works for the entire suite. So single sign-on is the first one. We have single sign-on for TMS. We have single sign-on for strings. But if you log in through the TMS SSO, you'll get only access to TMS. If you log in through strings SSO, you will only get access to the strings application. If you wanted to get access to all of it with your single identity, then you uh, need to use the uh, sweet uh, single sign-on that we just released in May. So eventually we wanna get rid of those two local kind of a legacy SSOs and move everybody to the uh, sweet SSO. And by uh, that, uh, you'll get access to all the functionality that we have available for you. So we're working towards uh, providing you with a single identity that has access to all our products, but at the same time also gives you access to multiple organizations in case you need to run multiple organizations. So that's uh, that's the power we're working on. There's going to be major strides in this by the end of this year. Now, as for the SSO um, uh, technicalities, uh, it supports uh, both flows, so so-called SP initiated flow. So that's when you start from our login page, and I'll demo that in a couple of minutes as well as the IDP initiated flow. So that's the flow that starts from the uh, identity provider, the SSO server, like Okta, for example. This first release already supports SSO enforcement. So if you need to prevent your, your users from accessing uh, suite by other means, for example, combination of username and password, then you can do it by enforcing SSO. What's coming soon, uh, later in the summer, is the auto-provisioning functionality. So that's a functionality that uh, basically allows you to avoid manually creating accounts within our suite. The accounts will be just associated with uh, our suite in your IDP provider. Uh, so let's say you're using Okta, so you would associate a new user with a suite application there, and the account then gets created automatically on our end when the user logs in for the first time. We also, shortly after that, will release the skim. Uh, it's very similar in a way. Uh, it also automatically creates the users, but it doesn't do that when you're logging in for the first time. It does that behind the scenes sort of earlier in the process. And that may be useful when, for example, want to create um, an account for a linguist and you want to already start assigning jobs to the linguist, but the linguist hasn't logged in yet, right? So you want that account to be created uh, beforehand. So that's a single sign on. Trace Orchestrator, uh, yes. So we release really, really powerful uh, automation tool. We call it Phrase Orchestrator. It was released uh, back in February. Um, it is an environment in which you can uh, create workflows visually. And these workflows allows you to automate a lot of steps that you would otherwise do manually. It connects to strings and TMS through their public API. So it has a really lot of power because we are API first and uh, pretty much anything that you can do in the UI, you can do through the APIs. So very powerful tool. Uh, as, a, as a tool that allows you to build, build these scripts, these, these flows, uh, it is sort of very similar to, you can think about it as a graphical programming and as a, as, a, as a sort of a programming sort of environment, it needs to support the typical construct, constructs that you use in those languages, for example, branching, so in this uh, May release, uh, we added support for loops. Obviously, with loops, you can simplify the flows that you had to do otherwise linear before. Uh, they can execute faster. We also added support for pagination. Uh, so in case that you are getting from the API caller results uh, that are long, uh, then you're probably going to get uh, those in pages. So automatically, you can page through them. 
So we are constantly making improvements to the orchestrator uh, as we go. Uh, next one is going to be about GPT, of course. Um, so yes, we're making a lot of investments there as well. Some of them are very obvious. So we would like to very soon, and that's a matter of maybe days or weeks, uh, release uh, GPT integration as an MT engine. This will be available uh, to both TMS and Strings, which adds to a very large family of MT uh, engine integrations that we already support. That's over 30 for TMS. I think this would be number 34. And then, um, and then uh, again, I've mentioned the release is going to be uh, in June, uh, really, really very shortly. But that's not the end of it, of course. GPT provides a lot of, lot of, or large language models provide a lot of additional opportunities, whether that's you know term extractions, quality kind of a validation, and such. It's almost uh, beyond imagination at this point because it's such a new technology. So we want to approach it a little bit differently. We want to actually invite you uh, to our beta program where we're developing some of the exciting implementations already. But on top of it, we are open to a lot of ideas that you can provide. So some of the things that are in works right now include a quality evaluation uh, that would be available at every workflow step, extracting context, and uh, also automating some of the post-editing tasks. So you can apply for it. If you go to our homepage, there's going to be kind of a link to uh, additional information. And then uh, you can become a beta uh, tester for us. And it comes with the advantage, uh, advantages as usual beta programs, which is you get early access to the program. Uh, you get to also influence and impact uh, some of the development. So um, please go ahead and apply if you're interested. And uh, last sort of connectivity uh, is related to connectivity within our own products. So we're constantly making improvements in the way that the strings and TMS kind of interact. And this will be largely a focus of my demo that I'll, sh I'll show in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go really quick through this one. Uh, this one. This one is uh, related to uh, the flow when uh, you are translating through TMS but uh, you need to make a quick update to a translation directly in the strings. And in order for it to persist in the translation memories in TMS, uh, there is a thing behind the scene that uh, does that, that, that does that synchronization. And I'll again show that in the demo. Before we get into the demo, uh, if you're not that familiar with strings and then uh, TMS or both products, and Ellison has done a really good job of explaining the difference between them, but again, kind of set the scope, set the stone, uh, stage for the demo. Um, I want to I wanna kind of describe a little bit how this would be typically used together. So it's a lot about the audiences. So strings is meant for the product teams, for the digital product teams, product managers, designers, copywriters, or even the engineers who work on the product. And it's essentially a repository of strings. So you define the strings, you manage them, you bulk update them, you, it maintains the history for you. You can see the change uh, changes. You can revert back to the previous values. You can combine them in these buckets, in these, in these uh, kind of a branches uh, as you're developing the features. Uh, it has a direct integration with the Git repositories that uh, where you typically output and generate the localization files. And, and much more. On the other hand, your localization team is likely to use a different tool. That's the TMS. Uh, so that's meant for the localization team. So that's a typical full-blown TMS system. Allows you to collaborate with your vendors, allows you to generate quotes for them, you know, manage the financials around it, uh, generate the analysis so you know how much work there is. Uh, it has a very powerful linguistic features, uh, TM matches, fuzzy matching, machine translation, terminology management, and all of that that you would expect from TMS. So you've got a product team in strings and you've got a localization team in TMS. And then we'll show you how you hand off the work between those two, how they can collaborate together. So I will share my screen. Okay, so you should see our homepage, phrase.com homepage, unlock language, unlock opportunity. I'll start from there. I'm going to click the login, and I'm going to say a few words. Uh, so before, when strings and TMS were separate products, you were logging into them through separate screens. Those are still available, but they will eventually go away because we need to provide you with one login, again, to all the tools that we have in our portfolio. So this is the new login page. And um, I'm going to log in through SSO. 
because that was one of the connectivity releases that I was introducing a couple of minutes ago. So this is the new SSO. I'm going to provide, I'm going to specify my um, creative uh, global unique identifier so it knows which uh, organization I'm trying to log into. And then so behind the scenes, it's talking to Okta. It was very quick, actually. It was talking to Okta. We use Okta here. And uh, because I was logged into Okta already, it logged me in. And you can see there is uh, my personal account. All right. And you can see that on this dashboard, I'm immediately getting access to multiple tools, strings, TMS. Uh, you can see the uh, orchestrator that is still in the closed beta. And then there's going to be more products popping up over time. So in this demo, what I'm going to do as a first step is to pretend that I'm a product manager. And then so I entered strings uh, to make it even more visually clear, like in which role I am, I actually changed the uh, strings to dark mode. So if it's dark, then it's product team. If it's bright, then it's localization team. So I'm a product team on the dark side. And I have my demo application here that is translated to, uh, what is it, seven languages. My source language is uh, English here. And I've got uh, six additional languages, so a uh, really interesting mix there. So I'm going to go and actually focus on Chinese for the demonstration purposes. So you can see that I've got about 19 keys here. The ones that I'm interested in are in feature uh, that has the keys uh, with name layout in them. So I'm going to use those. Uh, you can also notice that the Chinese language is not populated. It's empty. So our goal is to send these keys to the localization team that is using TMS. And then from there, uh, populate them back in strings. So I'm going to add them to job. I'm ready to send the job to the localization team. I'm going to create it right from this environment. Call it feature layout. Now, before I actually switch to the job itself, I want to highlight a few things. Uh, I want to demonstrate that uh, we have full support for ICU messages. So you can see this is formatted as ICU message. Uh, it uses three plural forms in English, zero, one, and other. Uh, for this key, I also have the description populated. Uh, I also have the screenshot populated here. And we want to see how this appears to the linguists that are using the TMS cat editor. We want to make sure that they have access to this information right? for context. There's one more interesting key. It's the about key. Uh, it's a little larger chunk of text. So uh, to make sure that it doesn't break loud, uh, we have defined that there's character limit 150 characters. So again, we want to see how this appears to the linguists uh, in the cat editor. So I'm all set here. Uh, I've got the job here. And uh, all I need to do now is set the target languages. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to, I'm just going to translate to all the other languages. And so as a product manager, I'm done. Uh, uh, all I need to do now is just start the job. Okay, so as I start the job, like uh, right now, uh, there's uh, exchange of information. Uh, the job is being submitted to TMS. So I'm going to now, in the next step, uh, switch the roles. And I'm now a localization project manager. So again, entering through this screen, uh, but now going to TMS. So you can see that the feature already is listed here as one of the projects. Uh, it was done in 1627. That's exactly this time. And uh, this is a typical uh, TMS project. So the localization team. Um, just works as usual. Uh, there's the source and the target languages. For each target language, we've got a job here that contains those 12 keys. I've got automatically generated analysis, quotes, and I have automatically assigned also the translation memories and pre-translated the jobs. So everything is ready for me. Uh, as a product project manager, I would now set the due dates probably and assign the providers. I could also automate that. I didn't uh, because I'm going to do the work myself uh, just to avoid too much switching. So now I'm uh, going to localize the uh, Chinese job. As a linguist, I will first accept that. And then now I would go through the individual strings, but I want to demonstrate a couple of things here. So this is the one that has a limit 150 characters. You can see the information was carried over here. So the linguists have full access to it. I'm just going to do something really quick. 
to show you what happens if I go over that. So uh, the editor is very clear about the fact that I went over. Let me, let me delete that and confirm it. A lot of these matches are actually one-on-one -on -one matches. They're coming from that TM that I had associated with it. Uh, one exception is uh, apparently I didn't have App Store in it. So that's machine translation. I actually used our own phrase translate next MT engine. So that's our phrase uh, engine. Uh, we just added in May uh, support for uh, simplified Chinese. There was already a lot of support for the Western languages. So now we have also simplified Chinese. So that's what I'm demonstrating right now. Again, let's do confirm. And then let's maybe make a typo. I don't, I don't really speak uh, uh, this language. So I'm just going to just going to do this, this typo and then complete the job. Okay. Oh, one thing that I also wanted to show is the ICU message. So here's the ICU message. Uh, in English, it had three plural forms. If you remember, zero, one, and then other. Uh, in Chinese, that's not the best language for demonstrating ICU messages because the only plural form there is other. Uh, of course, if this was another language, like let's say Czech, Russian, then there would be quite a few plural forms available. Uh, they would be automatically populated uh, based on the rules, right? So each language has sort of predefined those. Uh, the system knows what those are and then sets it to uh, automatically to those forms. You can also see that there's the description uh, that was defined in the strings. Uh, you can also see there's the screenshot that came over. And then there's some additional metadata information that is available here. So all of that was uh, carried over from strings. So the linguists have access to that information. And as a, as a project manager, I would uh, see that the Chinese was completed. I really don't have to do anything. The way that I have the workflow set up today, everything is automated. So it was automatically pushed back to uh, strings. Now, of course, I could have multiple workflow steps here, and I could have actual review step, and after that, push it back to the strings. I could also set it up in a way that it would wait for all the languages to finish, and then it would be pushed back to strings. But now I have it very simple. As soon as the job is completed, uh, the localizations go back to strings. So let's go back to strings. Uh, hopefully, it's already back there. And it is. So this is the uh, Chinese language. This is the same screen. I've got the 12 keys that I submitted uh, for the job. And you can see that the that the localizations are already in there. I can actually switch to a little, to a little bit of a view to make it a little easier. So here we go. We've got, uh, we've got these localizations here, including the typo, right? So as the product manager, I'm pretty happy. Uh, the localization team uh, took care of it. They did it in the tool that they are used to. Um, they they had all the functionality that they needed available. They've done the job for me. Now, there's the typo. Now, I could go back to the localization team um, and then communicate out that this needs to get corrected and they would take care of it. But uh, you could also enable uh, the authors within strings to do that directly. So I'm going to Go and fix that typo right in strings. Save that. Oh, I should have show you. Should have. Okay, maybe I'll still have time to do that. But I think it was very virtually immediate. I wanted to show you uh, the source logout. Okay. Well, too late. If I if I show this screen a minute ago, you would still see there was a typo in this string. Uh, you can probably see that the timestamp it was updated was uh, thirty two, which is which is right now. I can still see that, uh, of course, in the editor until I refresh it. I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. And you can see that the typo has disappeared. So what we're showing basically is that uh, there is a good communication between strings and then TMS. And if there's a correction uh, in strings, then it has to be propagated back to the TMS. Otherwise, next time, I, if I fix it only here and it wouldn't be propagated to the TM, Next time I'm sending this out back for a retranslation, I get back the old strings with the typo, right? But that's been taken care of. All right, so all of the things that I've shown is out of the box functionality, and we're working on more. What I wanna also show you is, in case that you have requirements that are, we cannot complete with the out of the box functionality, then you can always go and then use the orchestrator. So the orchestrator is the tool 
that let you manipulate through our APIs and pretty much do everything that you need. So I'm not going to test that right now because uh, that would have to be more set up and it would take a little more longer. And we also have a dedicated uh, orchestrator webcast uh, coming up this month. But I just kind of want to show you really quickly the environment. And this is an example of a flow of a script that is waiting and listening for a file upload. Once the file is uploaded to the project, it will go ahead and create a job automatically add the locales automatically to it and start the jobs. So the steps that I've done in strings manually can be also fully automated. That's an example of how you could use orchestrator. Okay, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then let Allison to help me with one more slide and then I'll pass it back to Allison. So this is really just a summary of what we've seen in the demo. Um, uh, we've seen that there is a really good integration between strings and TMS. The strings is used by the product teams and they can happily manage their strings there. They can associate a screenshot. They can provide additional context through description. They can use uh, plural forms uh, in the form of ICUs and so on and so forth. They can set the limits on the length and all of that gets carried over to the uh, TMS. The linguists have uh, knowledge of those. Um, they can localize and use the full power of the TMS. Once done, the content is brought back to strings. If there is an update to the translation, then it also gets synced to TMS. Now, by the way, that's all configurable. If you don't want it that way, some teams may not want it that way, then that's perfectly fine. You don't have to uh, enable that. The only thing that I haven't uh, demoed really, uh, or two things, uh, is that there is also support for branching. If you're familiar with strings, uh, you know that there is ability to have multiple parallel branches open. So this uh, integration supports that. And then um, I haven't demonstrated uh, plural forms or pluralized keys that are not using ICU messages, but are using sort of the um, non-ICU embedded sort of uh, pluralization support in strings, uh, often found in file formats like IATN Next and such. That is coming very soon. I actually think that the release is next week. Uh, so that will be supported as well. All right, with that, I'll pass it back to Allison. Thanks for the demo, Martin. That's and, I think we have yes. you on mute. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, now we, no, it's- Oh, of... okay, perfect. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go to go through some of the other exciting releases that came out in May. First up is the customizable contextual sidebar. And now there was a sidebar that existed in strings prior to this, but it's much improved now. The, the previous one was not customizable at all. It was rigid and not flexible. With this sidebar, you can hide and reorder sections according to your job role so that it's much easier to find the things that you need and create a more focused workspace. Also for strings, we have the improved advanced search. So the previous search function only allowed users to sort uh, to search for language and without filtering and sorting. Now with the enhanced search, you can search for keys and also jobs and projects. You can filter and sort per project and language so that you can better pinpoint what you're looking for, which is great news for project managers who always have to go through very large projects. Um, and lastly, for strings, we have dark mode, which I know a lot of people will be really happy about. It's now available for the entire UI before it was just available for the editor. So much easier on the eye and support sustained performance and productivity. Moving on to the TMS releases, we rolled out enhancements to standard and advanced analytics. The new dashboards give insights into job quotes, cost, savings, and leverage, and have been added to both standard and advanced analytics. So for example, for job quotes, you can access information about vendor payments. For costs, you can better see how much is spent per word or per page. In the savings, you can see how much is saved from things like translation memory, machine translation, and repetitions. 
And with leverage, you can see exactly how much translated content came from your translation memory, machine translation repetitions, and all of this, uh, all of these savings that you can leverage from your existing resources. And the difference between standard analytics and uh, advanced anal analytics is the granularity of which you can see the data. So if you have any questions about this and want to explore advanced analytics, reach out to your customer success manager or check out our website to, to trial it out. Um, and finally, we're really excited about Phrase Next MT, which has introduced an eighth language pair, Simplified Chinese. In our tests, its performance is comparable to leading engines. And it's especially exciting for people working in this language pair because they can also experience additional performance gains thanks to features like TM fuzzy match and MT glossary support. And, and much more that comes with using Phrase Translate and Phrase Next MT. So now that we've pretty much covered the releases, Martin is going to have a look at our roadmap and let you know what's in store for the future. All right. Um, just to be clear, this is not like a full roadmap. We have way more things on our list. This is specifically focusing on the connectivity within our product. So the stuff around the identity management and then the integration between strings and TMS. So on the identity management, again, kind of the ultimate goal is to give you uh, ability to have one, one account, one identity that has access to any of our products that you wish to have access to. And you can also set it up uh, with multiple organizations. So there's only one login and you immediately are in and you get access to all of that. So the immediate releases are going to be, or the very soon releases are going to be uh, later in the summer, the auto provisioning, shortly after that skim, then uh, general improvements in the user access management. That has to be, that's kind of a must because we're adding that additional layer uh, of user management there. So we'll make sure that there's uh, enough features available to effectively manage these users. Um, very exciting is that ability to uh, access multiple organizations with that single identity. Now that was always available in strings. Uh, you can have user that has access to multiple organizations uh, where it's not available is TMS. Once we add it to TMS, which we should be this summer, then we can launch it everywhere sort of in the suite. So you'll have that functionality everywhere. Then we'll be also uh, switching the social signings. We'll start with the Google and there's a few more that are supported um, like Microsoft, for example. On the integration that I sort of demonstrated between strings and TMS, I've already mentioned the pluralized keys, uh, the non-ICU are getting live very, very soon. Um, passing the due date from strings. So in case that it's not the, the sort of a project manager in um, uh, TMS who sets the due date, you can have the product manager who is operating within strings to sort of suggest the due date or specify the due date, and that will be passed to the TMS projects as well. We also want to make sure that it scales because we are seeing a pretty good sort of hockey stick uh, in terms of the usage of that integration. Um, we will uh, work on some scalability and performance improvements. So it's very swift and it's high performing in terms of the throughput that flows you know, through, those, uh, through that integration. All right. Thank you, Alison. Back to you. And finally, we just wanted to share some upcoming webinars with you. There's one already on the calendar, which is Introduction to Phrase TMS for Linguists on June 14th. So go ahead and go to our website to sign up for that. And there are also upcoming webinars specifically dedicated to Orchestrator and our analytics uh, capabilities. Those dates haven't been set yet, but they're they're coming up very soon. So stay on the lookout for those to, to learn more about those two features. And now we'll move to Q and A. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Slido and we'll go through them now. Uh, okay, so I see the First one, does job sync support TMS project templates? Yes, it does. Um, 
There is actually a relevant question, a related question to that. I think it's the third one. Uh, the question is: Is it is are we using behind the scenes the automated project creation functionality that's readily available uh, within uh, TMS? And the answer is yes. So everything that comes with that, which includes the project templates um, support, uh, is available for this integration between strings and TMS. Uh, we've intentionally done that because uh, APC is very powerful and comes loaded with the features. Uh, and then we're constantly um, constantly investing in that. There's a whole team actually working on it. So uh, we can automatically uh, make that available to the users. What I specifically did in my demo is I used um, APC in combination with webhooks. So uh, strings generated a webhook, um, sorry, called a webhook um, that triggered the APC. That's why the updates were pretty much like immediate. Uh, so I didn't have to wait for uh, some sort of a schedule to pick it up. So as soon as I submitted the job, it appeared in TMS. Uh, that's why all of the things that were generated within the project were automated. I used the APC for it. And then, uh, and so, and yes, that's, so the answer is yes to both. Um, both first questions. And then there's another one. Uh, what happens if the target and source changes? Um, so I think we partially answered that in the demo. If the target changes, I'm assuming that that's uh, on the string side. So if the target changes on the strings side, then it gets synced to TMS. Again, if you wish so, you can always uh, turn it off. That actually is available also as a setting in APC. So if in the APC you say, that's what I want, then that's what is, what's going to happen. Uh, if uh, the source changes, then um, it will be part of the next job. Uh, so as you, uh, let's say, uh, if you change the source after it was being pulled uh, into TMS, then it will be part of the next batch. We're also looking into functionality where this could be uh, functioning as a continuous project on the TMS side. Uh, so in that case, it would be also picking up automatically the source changes and making them part of the same project on the TMS, but that hasn't been yet um, worked on. What does pluralized keys mean? Uh, yeah, apology if, uh, if I went too quickly through that. So let's say, I don't know if we have something on this screen. Uh, yeah, so let's say that there's a, there's a text uh, that says, oh, you've got three questions. Right, so the three questions, the questions is plural form, it's plural, uh, it's uh, plural. If there was only one question, uh, the string could probably say, oh, you only have one question, which is singular. If you don't have any questions, the string uh, would probably say no questions. So you can basically take one string, single string, and depending on what the count is uh, deliver a different version of the string, but it's considered in the application one string. So the developer is basically referring to one string only. So that's what the pluralization means. Okay, the next one is cost. And the cost uh, analytics section works for multiple currencies. Is there a way to how to set up uh, the currency exchange rate or take automatically from official authorities and use it. So it's not necessarily to filter each currency individually, but have overview of all currencies within cost. Um, not at the moment, uh, really interesting idea. I'll pass that, um, we can pass that along, uh, but not currently it's not uh, implemented. It's not supported. What about using the suite if an organization is on two different plans in the strings? Um, Yes, that's, yeah, so I think this is referring to the situation. So if you are becoming, if you became the customer right now, um, because you already have access to both products um, from one account, then you would create uh, one plan or one subscription, um, right? And then you can combine different plans. Um, by the way, you can have, let's say, um, basic or advanced from strings up to you and then combine it with pretty much any any plan within TMS. As long as, of course, it has the capabilities that you need, like the APC, for example, is not available for Team Start. But as for uh, those who are created in the past, so you could actually uh, create uh, an account for strings and TMS before we had that unified uh, identity management. I think that's what the question is referring to. 
Well, in that case, you will have two organizations. We are working uh, or will be working on a functionality that allows you to sort of merge these organizations. That's also true for user accounts. Uh, you could have multiple user accounts uh, with us uh, for different organizations, and we will provide you with functionality that lets you kind of merge them together, unify them. So first we need to sort of deploy the functionality that supports that within TMS, the one that I've mentioned. And then once we have that, we'll focus on the kind of the migration, uh, giving you the tools to migrate uh, the accounts uh, together into, into one. We can do that automatically, by the way, because we obviously don't know which are your accounts. So this will act, this will have to be um, kind of manual stuff from you, but uh, you will be equipped with the tools for it. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Hopefully I got the question correctly. Okay. For now, it looks like that was the last question. Well, I'll wait a few more seconds to see if any uh, come in, but uh, we'd just like to thank everyone for joining us on the webinar today. If there's no more questions, we will end it here. I don't see any coming in. So thank you everybody for attending. I hope you enjoyed it and we answered some of your questions. Uh, that's it from us. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye.